solar versus on-grid power are at the top of our minds until a nearby wildfire begins to burn in our direction. Wow, it's getting smokier and smokier up that direction. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since. And now, after moving from the USA to Portugal, we'll be documenting our entire journey of building our dreams as we transform a historic water mill into our first home, not on wheels. Join us as we embark on this new and exciting phase of life. Now, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Currently our camper van is equipped with one measly and old 100 watt solar panel and no inverter for charging or plugging anything in other than 12 volt USB ports. And while we have our portable generators, those are actually a lot of work for Drew and we just needed a more powerful, easier system. Solar panels, connecting cables, cables, housing to the roof, solar controller, more cables, fuse, temperature controller, fuses, it's not a fuse, it's a wire. Bus bars, positive, negative, voltage monitor, on off switch, more fuses, inverter, inverter monitor, cranks, connectors, lugs. And of course, lithium battery. I'm just hoping I have everything I need and the right amount of cable, etc. This can be a little challenging because I gotta figure out how I'm gonna actually drill a hole to mount the cables, the housing, get the solar panels up on the roof. Last time I did this, I was actually building an entire camper. If you guys haven't watched, our Sprinter Van legendary van build series back from 2019 slash 2018 when we built Spirit, our beloved Sprinter Van back in the US. And now I'm just revamping this system. It's pretty exciting. Next step was cleaning under the bed where a bulk of the project would be happening over the next few days. <laughs> Then he was ready to start reorganizing the placement and inner workings of what would become our new and improved solar powered system. And some of you might be wondering where I was during all of this. Let's just say I was simply trying to stay out of the way. Babe, I think that <laughs> this is what I wake up to in the morning doing yoga. Good morning, sleepyheads. <laughs> I'm doing yoga next to all of our solar parts. <laughs> you know what, when you live van life every day, you gotta adjust things, move things, put water in the camper. I got all our stuff sitting out around here, so I'm putting some of it in the shade so it doesn't get blasted by the sun throughout the day. What can I do to help you? It's been a busy morning. I think I need a swim. Ooh, lagoon. All right, Brittany's turn to get in. I was just in down there. Go for it. Doesn't that feel like a relief? It is fresh. I gotta say, that lagoon is everything to us this summer, especially on these hot days. I don't know what we'd do without it. Breakfast is served. Thank you. With a side of ladder. With a new ladder. Whoa. Gotta get on the roof somehow. It's gonna be hot. Uh, Tell me about it. I gotta say, it's really hard to motivate yourself to do the hard things and work outside when it's 
sunny and really hot out, but... And there's a beach nearby. And there's a beach nearby, it's true. And next week there's a heat wave coming and we don't want to have to leave like we did a few weeks ago. We would rather stay here and move down onto terrace number two. So despite the fact that it might be windier, we're gonna go for it and just try it out because if that means that we can stay here on our land and endure the heat wave maybe a little bit more comfortably, I think we'll be in a much better situation. Let's see if I can get up there. This ladder is gonna play a key role in helping us install our brand new, unbreakable, portable, flexible, lightweight solar panels from Bouge RV. I mean, check this out. Here we have the 100 watt Paso solar panel and it fits into what is like a briefcase bag, you know? And it is so lightweight. But look at this, little buttons here. But these are like the most foldable, lightweight solar panels I have ever experienced. And the best part is that even if there's partial shade, the solar panels will continue to work, which is probably our favorite part. It's because there's a diode placed in between each solar panel. They're so strong and unbreakable that we can even <laughs> play like hopscotch on them. And over here, we have the 200 watt Yuma solar panel and it Whoa. rolls. Look at that. What's great is that it's super easy to mount because you can just use these adhesive strips. No drilling, no nothing. And then you can like run them over. Whoa, look at that. That's crazy guys. This thing's so durable. And what's awesome about the fact that we don't have to like drill them into our roof or anything is the fact that like if Drew and I wanted to put this on say a container for one of our future workshops, we could easily move it from our camper van, which will now have like a way stronger solar system. Like we're not gonna have to go plug in at a campground to top up anymore. What I read is that they're super efficient. They use this new SIGS technology, which means that we're just gonna have power pouring in our camper. And right now using our link below and the code ADVENTURE27, you can enjoy 27% off of the 200 watt Yuma one that I am sitting on top of. And they have their solar blanket, which is what they like to call the Paso 100 because it is just so lightweight and using the code adventure 23 you will enjoy 23 percent off of this amazing solar technology so i'm very grateful that we are going to have this on top of our camper van and we want to thank bouge rv again for sponsoring this episode we hope that we can enjoy an empowering and very bright future together we're extremely grateful that products like this exist that allow us to run our lives off grid on a raw land out here. With that said, we have a super big decision of how we're gonna get power down to our mill. And I think we have a lot to think about. Especially because in the case of a fire, they turn off all electricity to the homes in the region, but they also take on the responsibility for repairing the system. Versus if we go with solar, we're required to maintain the entire system ourselves. I don't know if you guys knew this, but the water mill has never been lived in before. Once we get the habitation license, after we do the construction and all of the things right in there, which we are very excited to get started on, we will be the first ones to ever live in the water mill. But we have had some people come down and give us quotes and thoughts on what it would be like to actually have on-grid power. And basically it's a big project. They would have to build, I think like three towers. And the reason that we had somebody come and look at that option is because we've been told by the locals that relying solely on solar, especially in the winter is pretty risky to do because it can get real cloudy and rainy. We've thought of supplementing it with maybe wind or hydro, you know, a water wheel situation. But at the same time, if we ever want to expand this into some sort of an ecotourism project, that just might require more power. So having the option to connect to the grid is something that we've been playing with. Again, it's a major expense. Um, even having somebody come to build the little powerhouse, I think we were quoted how much? 2700 27. for the electrician and the bricklayer. We're like, can we do this? Can you just give us the dimensions? I'll lay some bricks. I can be a mason. <laughs> and that's just for us to be able to get the quote to find the actual connection to the grid. 
That's not the final gig. That's right. We've still not been told what it would cost to have the multiple towers built and then the wires strung and the power brought down to the mill. So, anywho, for now, solar is the answer. Actually, solar is like the key to the future and I really love green energy. It's so amazing that we can like charge up our scooters and work on our computers and it's just because the sun is shining. It's really beautiful. But anywho, uh, in order to get these installed, I don't know what Drew has to do, but, I, but he has seemed overwhelmed. But I do have a plan. I've been underneath the bed researching how I'm gonna get the cable up the back wall through the cabinets and a hole drilled into our roof so that we can easily put these solar panels up there. Let's get to it. Things are looking pretty crazy inside the house. We got the bed lifted, the upper fan going, the lower fan, the air conditioner is in place. Oh, and <laughs> I love this. The other day we accidentally bought the wrong size little coffee capsules, but Drew used a tool, which channel lock to rip this open. So this is the size that we need and this is the size that we bought. <laughs> and these are really thick plastic. But Drew has a solution for getting them open. I was wondering what you were doing this morning. I've been doing a lot of things. There it is. Ooh, that's exciting. Just in a couple strategic spots. And voila, we oh, have coffee. Beautiful. We don't usually buy these little things because they create more waste, but every once in a while, it is just nice to have a quick and easy coffee scoop ready to go. Although, that sort of defeated the purpose. Can we just say it is 96 degrees? I'm really wishing it was the other day when Drew and I went paddle boarding out on the river. Man, this is exciting. Oh, finally we can get out on the water. Whoop, whoop. You guys have seen us hike with our paddle boards on our backs in this same backpack when we were in Puerto Rico. Well, now we'll be able to do it all across Europe. I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's get in that water. We found the calmest waters around. We just noticed this guy who has his cute little sports car and his cute little boat, but they need a little extra help getting that boat in the water. We don't want to get the car too close. Aw, oh, that was nice. Uh, just helping some other fellas out. It's a beautiful day to be on the water. Yeah, we want them to go play too. <laughs> I was saying to Brittany, one thing you don't see is an Audi sports car pulling a boat in a trailer. No, I know. Cool to see here. Yeah, how fun. And even the rope hooked to the trailer to get it out further. Yeah. All right, let's go play. This is our inaugural float, babe. She's in the water and she's floating. Woohoo! It feels wonderful in this temperature. Wow. Whoa, that is a big jelly. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting in the water. Right. Where did it go? It was right in front of us, but he dove like maybe five meters. He literally dove. Wow. Portuguese man of war? Wow, I maybe? would not have wanted to be stung by that thing. No way. I feel like Same. my arm is stingy just from being in the water around it. I can't believe he was this far up the river. Wow. I mean, he had to go past all of Porto Mau back there. Yeah. We're finally under the bridge. Like the Red Hot Chili Pepper song. <laughs> <laughs> Very peaceful. Wow. Well built bridge. Yeah. <laughs> around the curve ahead. Wow. Wow. Oh, a little shrine. That's cool. Wow. One paddle to you. Oh. I'm hot. <laughs> Not anymore. That's wonderful. It's just 30 minutes away from here and let me say it is very tempting. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we can play in the water. But today you play under the bed. Holy smokes. Aww. It's like getting up in your attic, except I'm under the bed. <laughs> but upside down. Hey babe, look at this. 
This old TV antenna from the people before us. Oh my. <laughs> oh, guess we're not using that anymore. Other than that, how is it going up there? Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> It is now 99 degrees. All right, guys, this is one of those scary moments. I got the drill. I'm actually going to be putting a hole right through our roof right now. And I'm through. All right, right there. There's my pilot hole. Whoa, okay, you're in. There it is. <laughs> yep, you definitely made a hole in my closet. Is that gonna go on the roof? Yep, this little housing. There we go. <laughs> See it coming down? Yep, the red cord's coming through. Oh, and the black. Success. He made a loopy loop. Drew is currently putting the drone up in the air because all of a sudden we were both like, you smell bonfire? I smell bonfire. And we were like, I think there's a fire. So we picked up our phones, looked at the Fogos.bt app, and it looks like there's actually an active fire in Odemira, which is maybe an hour and a half away, two hours, but there's 46 vehicles and 148 firefighters present. So let's just pray that that fire gets put out quickly, that everyone is safe, and that's all that we can hope for, you know? But pretty crazy. Can you see anything? I just see smoke out in the distance. You know what's crazy is that when we left for the last heat wave, we drove the road where it shows that this fire is. I know. It's wild. It is really wild. You can definitely see smoke coming from the north side of Monchique. Wow. Oh. Yeah, Thanks. it's really hazy out to the west. It's not what you want to hear. With the smoke looming in the distance, at least we had a happy invitation from our neighbor to come and pick figs from his little garden whenever we wanted. But here we are. It's a grove full of lemon trees, orange trees, and look at how gorgeous the plums are. Wow, look at this feather, right next to the onions. I can't quite reach those, but I can admire them. Thank you, Fig Tree. I brought one for Drew. Need a little fig break? I do. You want to see something totally crazy, though? Okay. This is from our buddy Ralph that's in Al Jazeera. Look at the smoke plume north of them. That is heavy. Wow. Wow, it's getting smokier and smokier up that direction. Well, on a sweeter note. Fig? I think we're all right here, but thank you. I wish you guys could taste through the screen. This has been the best fig of the season. Little jelly globule of joy and love and nourishment. From my mouth to all of your sweet souls. One girl, many bottles. I may help. <laughs> Part, of our... seat on trip. Part of our off grid chores around here. Better make sure we have our water. I was just thinking, I'm actually really glad that we didn't yet move down onto terrace number two because this is pretty much our first fire of the season. And, you know, if we need to make a quick go, at least we're still right here. But. Let's just hope that this goes back out soon because we just checked the app and it is still ongoing. Yeah. I know we'll sleep a lot better if we see that it is in conclusion. Our lungs will appreciate it too. 
Yeah. But, you know what else is crazy, guys? I'm about to use a heat gun. As if we need more heat. I gotta wrap the little wires that I'm making with the new lugs that I'm putting on them to make sure we have a nice, secure connection for our power system. <laughs> on that note, before he makes this place any hotter. <laughs> Man, 1800 watts? Wow. I'm out of here. So after about another three hours of measuring, cutting, splicing, crimping, I think I got all the wires that are needed for this entire system right here in my hands. And see that? There's heat shrink wrapping that has to be melted around each one of these lugs. So our generator up here, our power source is not big enough to handle the heat gun, which is 1800 watts. So I gotta go down to the mill, use a generator that I got working the other day down there, left from the previous owner, which is a 5,000 watt generator. And I can finally get these completed and then get everything back on this evening. Sure feels good to have those coated properly and have this generator running. Did you guys see? That thing started on its first pull. Whew. I worked so hard to clean the carburetor out on that. All right, huge moment here. I'm gonna attempt to fire up the generator. This generator has been sitting in the water mill for seven or eight years unused. I drained all the fuel, cleaned the carburetor. I even had a mishap and broke the post that holds the float off. So if this thing starts, I'm gonna feel like that's a huge victory for me. I've never undid a carburetor and fixed something quite like this. Luckily, I had the help of our German friend Volker who walked me through the cleaning process and some of the things that I could do to get this thing fired up again. So here goes. All right, choke on. so good right now if you put your mind to it and you have a good idea just stay at it learn how to do it research some youtube videos call a friend call a subscriber and lo and behold this thing is rocking and rolling it's nice that we're gonna have power down here not only at the camper van but down here for some of the projects ahead oh, feels good one other thing I want to say to all you single ladies watching right now is that Volker, he's an eligible bachelor. He lives in Germany, super friendly, nice guy, a Mr. Fix-It. He's a power sports mechanic by trade, so he travels all over the world. A great guy. So leave us a comment below. Maybe we're going to become a matchmaking service here on Mr. and Mrs. Adventure. This has definitely been one of those projects that I really didn't know how long it was going to take. And let's just say, it's taking a lot longer than I expected to do this whole power system. So after a great deal of consideration, planning, and laying out the wires between each of these components, I finally have the configuration that I think will work best. Leaves us with the most space for storage and optimizes the whole situation. And what do we have over there? Dinner's almost ready. Are you gonna be almost ready? I can take a time out. Yay. Oops. It is now 10.30 p.m. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes reality check. Drew is still working on things outside. We have discovered a leak of our water tank that's underneath the couch here. It's been leaking in this corner, so we had to move all the electrics out. 
I think I actually overflowed the intake when I was filling it with water yesterday, our whole camper van, and the hose pressurized and went spewing out, and I think it might have knocked off the intake hose, or there's a cap on top of this tank, which I think is causing a volcano eruption of water. The good news is it's so dry out that mold won't start. We just need to figure out if we need to fix the tank. Ah, I think it overflowed on the top. I think what happened is water came up through there, and over the top, leaning yeah. back just a little bit. There right. we go, there's our water tank. Wow, we have not gotten under there in a long time. And this is where I'll be sleeping tonight, at least for the beginning half of the night. I can't complain though. I get to look up at the stars. Working the late night shift tonight. Nice and cool out though. This is taking some real elbow grease. I'm sweating. All right, well, I think that's a wrap for the night. I've got everything connected except for the positive power cables to the battery, anything that would put electricity into the system right now. The solar panels still aren't attached on top, but I think I'm at a good standstill. We'll call the night and we'll get at this tomorrow when I can turn everything on and see that the solar is coming through the panels into the system, going through the charge controller, powering up the inverter and into the battery. Hey guys. The bed's calling your name. Mm. It's after midnight. guys find myself up here on the roof I might get these solar panels stuck down to the roof the cables secured and the housing caulk that allows the solar cables to run into the interior of the van go down to the power bank below the bed so once things are in place that'll feel really good and I can actually see the voltage from the top of the van in the solar panels going down into the power bank and then turn on the inverter and use it for the first time all right everything seems to be working under here I just installed the control panel for the inverter Oh yeah, I'm gonna install this somewhere else in the van later on, but right there the inverter has fired up 3,000 watts of pure power coming from our power system. I think I need to test something out guys. I think the vacuum would be perfect. The vacuum is about 1,300 watts. <laughs> oh, that feels job well done. I'm very proud of myself at this moment. That took a while, but it's done. It's complete. Woohoo! I did also want to give you guys an update and tell you that it's clear skies right now. There are fires very close to us, just a bit northwest. I'm feeling really grateful that the winds are pretty calm the last couple of days, even today. But the winds are going to pick up later in the day from the southeast, which will push them northwest, which is great for us but at the same time, somebody else is affected. There's over 500 firefighters that are working hard to put it out and control it. So let's just hope that that's the case and they can get it put out. Boom dia, good morning guys. I think I overheard Drew sort of updating you on the current situation with the fires. And it's pretty crazy, especially after what we had to endure with Drew's parents earlier this year with the hurricanes, to think about how vulnerable we are as humans and how interconnected we are with nature. You know, Drew and I choosing to live out here in the wilderness, surrounded by so much beauty and nature, at the same time, we are vulnerable. We're not living in a little townhouse, you know, surrounded by cement and concrete. We're surrounded by trees and wind and water and fire. And while we oftentimes find ourselves thinking, why didn't we just choose a simpler situation? 
It's because our souls need to be surrounded by nature, especially after living outside the box for eight years living in a van. We chose to live in a van so that we could live outside. And there's something so beautiful about being intertwined with mother nature like this. We have this deep understanding about how important it is to keep our lands cleared and, and a deep awareness of how strong and powerful fire is and wind and water and it's crazy how when it came to the hurricane water was like the most destructive force but here with fires water is the most healing force we had to grieve a lot of things when it came to the hurricane and when you are able to grieve those things and sort of move through the grief it changes who you are as a person it changes your life like literally because so much of Drew's childhood was washed away in the hurricane but in our souls it also moved us deeply and so with that being said we're not in the clear and we know that people are suffering and the firemen are working their hearts out you know and when it comes to that we can't help but feel for them and so we want to go ahead and donate to the firemen we're very grateful to have found a Facebook group where we can do so we can donate so that they can have food and water because they are just working day and night trying to combat these fires trying to keep us safe and so you know, we can all do a little bit, whether it's a natural disaster or just something in our personal lives. In moments like this, we are reminded of how much we need each other. So prayers going out to everyone who is being affected by anything that is distressing right now. You know, you are not alone. Forza, you know, keep up the strength, be brave. And again, I'm glad we didn't move down onto Terrace 2 just yet. I'm glad that we're gonna have an amped up solar system so that if we do in fact have to evacuate, we are going to be able to be very self-sustaining because all of the campgrounds are very full in this part of Portugal in the summer. So we won't be relying on plugging in and it just feels good. It feels good to be able to be responsible for our own needs and to live in community with nature even though, you know, she has her temper tantrums sometimes. Wow, we just made it to the top here, the top of the mountain, overlooking the Algarve, and we can see how close that fire really is. Wow, it is right there beyond that ridge. The wind is coming from this direction. Yeah, it's coming from the southeast, so it's pushing all the smoke plumes up that direction and keeping us safe, but it's only supposed to stay like that for another 24 hours, then it's gonna switch from a northwest wind headed all the way back down this way. And it is windy. I can't It'll imagine I can't imagine what's like close to those flames right now for the firefighters. I'm just grateful that we have a rolling home that we can escape in if we need to. I think yeah. everyone needs some sort of a camper for natural disasters. I'm gonna say it again. We did it for the hurricanes and whether it's fires or no matter what your area you know is vulnerable to i mean it's one thing to observe this stuff but when it affects the place you actually live yeah and i mean we talked about this months ago when we were working really hard to strim and brush cut and clear out our land and imagining what it could kind of be like but then to actually see this on the opposite yeah. side of the mountain makes it feel really real and it feels really close I mean, it is close. <laughs> it's not just a feeling, like, that is close. Well, at least we know we have all the water in our camper van. I <laughs> just stocked up yesterday. We don't even have to go find a campsite or a place to plug in. We can just park on the streets. But I hope we don't have to. In the village. I don't want to go. Just stay safe. Yeah. Know that we love you and we're thinking about you. And we'll keep you updated in the episodes to come on what actually happens. And in the community tab. So yeah. if you guys don't know, we do post in the community tab. And on Patreon, our behind the scenes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, we should share on Patreon like now, real time. Okay. We'll do that. We love you. At the próxima. See you soon. Next and time. if you are watching this, know that we film this week's, maybe a month in advance, of when yes. it actually publishes on YouTube. So This is August 7th. My mom's yeah. birthday. So, yep, just for the record. Okay. See you guys next episode. Yep. Keep your thoughts and prayers too.